Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is a 1422 medium wave, uh, the new Panhellenic voice. Welcome to our program, The Inner Voice. Uh, I am Dr. Gabriel Ibis. I'll be with you till one o'clock. And uh, today I'm going to be discussing a, a very fascinating topic the seasons of our nature. The seasons of our nature. Give me a few moments, my friends, to greet my uh, fellow Greek listeners, and I'll be back with you in just a sec. Καλησπέρα σας, κυρίες και κύριοι. Είσαστε συντονισμένοι στα 1422 μέσα κύματα της νέας πανελλήνιας φωνής με την εκπομπή μας εσωτερική φωνή. Μαζί σας ο Dr. Παναγιώτης Γαβριλίδης μέχρι τις μία η ώρα. Μείνετε συντονισμένοι μαζί μας. Και εύχομαι να αναπαύσουμε λίγο και να χαμογελάσουμε λίγο σήμερα. Ποιος ξέρει. Οκ. The seasons of our nature. First off, I want to say I get so um, many encouraging SMSs and telephone calls from people, even in person, people thanking me for the effort I put into the programs. Uh, I appreciate it. I'm glad you all appreciate it. And uh, no call, no SMS, no message, no um, kind word mentioned to me in person goes unnoticed. I'd like you to know that. Thank you for that. All right, my friends. The seasons of our nature. The seasons of our nature. You know, when uh, nature changes her seasons, the shift seems effortless certainly predictable and inevitable, isn't it? We all know that uh, summer follows spring, autumn follows summer, winter, autumn, spring, winter, etc., etc., don't we? The new season approaches and the old one retreats. That's how it happens every year. Every year from the beginning of time. Just as nature doesn't stay forever in a single season, though, neither do we. And that is perplexing to us as human beings. And, and it is alarming to us. Because we, we, we tend to think that we should feel the same way, think the same way, uh, all the time. And it's disconcerting to us and alarming when we don't. And, and we start thinking, well, maybe there's something wrong with me. Well, is there? Or is it maybe that, like nature, we also go through seasons? I propose that it is. I propose that um, just as there are four seasons in nature, our inner natures also experience four seasons, if you wish. Spring is the season of new beginnings. In summer we grow the fruits of our new beginnings, and in the fall or autumn we harvest the rewards of our efforts, including opportunities to be acknowledged and appreciated for our accomplishments, isn't it? In winter we rest, rediscovering our true selves, our authentic selves. Now, without winter, we cannot move into spring. We recognize the season we are uh, in both by the way we feel and by the movement of energy in and around our efforts. We know when we are putting forth our greatest efforts, but we don't always realize when we are internalizing our greatest learnings. See, it's not the level of effort that tells us what season we are in. It is the return of those efforts. Interesting, isn't it? Some, because sometimes, uh, at the wrong season, we are at the wrong season, we forget that we have these seasons in our nature, and we put forth great effort, but maybe it's winter, and we don't reap the rewards of that great effort. At other times, we put out very little effort, and yet because it's summer and spring or the, the fall autumn we gather uh, back we harvest a lot of reward and we think well 
Oh well, gee, I, I didn't put all that much effort into that. Well, what gives? Interesting, isn't it? So this should, the knowledge and awareness of this should be uh, an encouragement for us, encouraging and not disconcerting, because oh, it is so easy to be distressed. So wow, I am putting in so much effort, and yet I feel blur, and yet. You know, the rewards are very little. What's going on? Something must be wrong with me. <laughs> and we all go through that, isn't it? And and, and in, in preparing this program, in researching it, I, I found it very encouraging as a personal reminder to me that there are seasons in our nature. There are seasons in our lives, just as there are in nature. In the spring of our inner natures, our efforts, in analogy, begin to bring us returns, and we feel compelled to begin new projects, even some uh, that have rested on our shelves for many years. Yeah, here's a reason why I ever wondered why that happens, why you suddenly get the urge to do something that's been on the shelf for years. Well, this is probably it. You were probably waiting for the right season, and you didn't even know it. Our achievements um, and acclaim from peers, from family, from friends, tell us we're now in the summer of our inner natures. That's when these things tend to happen. We're always exceptions, of course, my friends. I realize that. We're talking about the norm here, not exceptions. You appreciate that. So other people recognize us in the spring of our inner natures. Uh, uh, they recognize us when we're in summer and want to celebrate with us. We feel stronger each day, a direct reflection of the intense heat of the summer sun. So, as we are beginning to go into summer, keep that in mind. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good way sometimes to synchronize our... It's a good idea to synchronize our inner natures with... Um, the seasons of nature. We are going into summer now, so now's the time to put in that effort, to put, to work hard, to get some of those projects down off the shelf that have been there for a number of years and so I'll never get to it, or who am I kidding? Well, maybe now is the time to put in some energy, get stuck into that project, whether it is involved with uh, your career or your relationship maybe you want to save a relationship that you think is has suffered or is maybe on the rocks maybe your health maybe now is the time to lose those four inches around your waist that you've been meaning to for years now see this is this is a good time to put forth that great effort because in summer that's what nature does now, in the fall of our inner natures, or the autumn, the Americans, uh, we call them autumn, the one know what you're talking about, they, they call it the fall. Then, having lived there for so many years, I'm afraid I picked up some of their habits and ways of saying things. <laughs> in the fall of our inner natures, in the autumn, we feel invincible. Everything we touch turns to gold. We're celebrated for our achievements. You see, you've gone through summer, worked hard, and now as the season turns from summer into the fall, into the autumn, because of all the hard work you put into the summer, well, now you can celebrate your achievements. You can celebrate your returns. And, and you seem to be headed for a permanent place in the winner's circle, so to speak. <laughs> uh, don't get too caught up in that, my friends. The so-called winner's circle. We're all God's children. We're all winners. We'll all, we'll all get there, okay? And it is never too late. It's never too late. Gee, I wish I'd thought of that idea before. Or I, I did think of that idea before, but I did nothing about it. And now Joe Blow is doing everything about it. No, oh, now I've lost my opportunity. I've lost my chance. No, no, you haven't. No, you haven't. It's always next year. It's always next month. There's always the next piece of land. There's always the next opportunity. It's never the end. 
there is enough there is more than enough keep that in mind my friends but sometimes paradoxically we feel the first signs of winter and everything begins to shift so here we are in the autumn in the fall we're doing so well and it's paradoxical everyone's applauding us wow you did well you worked hard in summer and now you're reaping the rewards well done etc etc but paradoxically at the same time we begin to feel the first chills of winter and we say oh oh things are beginning to shift well how come and it's positive you know people not only get depressed and terribly distressed over this some people will commit suicide over this not realizing that their inner natures are just changing seasons because no one can keep that pace up forever you see what I'm getting at here? Psychologically, emotionally, we're like the four seasons of nature. We go through our springs where new births, new ideas come into being. Then we go through our summers where the big spurt is there, the growth, the production. Then we go through the autumn where we start harvesting our blessings, reaping the rewards. And then suddenly winter begins to knock on the door. I say, but, but, but what's happening? I was I was so good in summer I, I must have lost my touch it's uh, life is over for me <laughs> it's over for me paradoxical isn't it everything begins to shift towards the end of autumn and towards the beginning of winter we really need to keep this in mind my friends I see so often I see this so often with my clients with people who come to me in great distress well, what's happening why I was so good just a month ago everybody was applauding me now I'm so depressed well it's the nature of the beast you see hang on hang on lend me your ears for a while you'll begin to understand it's gonna get better it's just a change in season for you emotionally we all go through it and if we don't know that we're going through it, it is so disconcerting. In the winter, then, of our inner natures, we tend to slow down. And we kind of feel the loss of the outer accomplishments, you know, the public acclaim. We say, wow, last month I was, you know, the next best thing since uh, the discovery of sliced cheese. And look at me now, <laughs> all washed out. <laughs> <laughs> so we tend to feel that loss that paradoxical loss of the outer accomplishments the outer public acclaim and of course the material possessions we're doing nothing written differently so we can't understand it yet there are fewer returns on our efforts we feel as if we're coming undone old fears you know an old fear maybe that we thought we'd put to rest resurfaces and we think oh horror of horrors I thought I dealt with that why is it again raising its ugly head to come and torment me this old fear and the more attached we are to worldly success and there's nothing wrong with that please believe me it's right and proper that's not where I'm coming from I'm coming from a completely different tack and um, um, I, I know you understand, so I'm not going to go into an explanation of that. So, uh, if we are, what I'm saying is, don't be unhealthily attached to worldly success, to the applause, to the public acclaim, etc. Oh, it's very nice and be grateful when it comes and bask in the sunshine, you know. But the more we are attached, to worldly success or or the more we are attached to old patterns and people with whom we've identified the harder we struggle you see the problem is not um, being applauded not being told well done not seeing your bank balance increase no but the problem is I didn't thinking that that is you you see and identifying with that and thinking that oh you know, if people are not applauding me anymore, that's it. I'm a has-been. I'm yesterday's news. No, 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 no. It's just a change of the season. 
So the more we identify with careers and position and status, the harder we struggle in the winter of our natures. And the more we struggle, the more our life seems to unravel before our very eyes. So we push and we pray and we ask and we beg, but to no avail. We think, well, th that certainly does it. I've even prayed about it. <laughs> and, and I've asked and I've begged and, I, and I've pushed <laughs> and I've struggled. A and it is to no avail. You see, our undoing, my friends, has a life of its own. And we seem its victims. During the winter season of our natures, some of us may even, may even entertain, as I said earlier, suicidal thoughts, my friends. I know, been there, done that. Most of us have. It's human nature, isn't it? The good thing, though, is this. Knowing about these four seasons in our natures, can calm us down when the gray and dark clouds of winter engulf us and stop us from pulling that trigger or from taking that overdose. You see, knowing about these things, we say, oh, well, it's okay. I'm not yesterday's news. <laughs> spring is on the way. Hang on, spring is on the way. And then suddenly, new hope new dreams new life is born again new energy wonderful isn't it wonderful this journey we call life wonderful it's never over it's never too late the only time it is is when we give up it's never over never too late there's always a new beginning I read a book once from written by a 98-year-old lady that I met in Houston that I had the immense pleasure of meeting in Houston. Uh, she had just written that book. She had just published it. It was called Life Always Begins. What a beautiful motto for all of us to espouse. Life always begins now. Now, now, now. See what I mean? Life always begins. It's never too late. It's never over. You see? So here is a 98-year-old lady. She was a bank manager all her life. And uh, she had just published this book just a few months ago. And she was already working on her next book. What a wonderful example. Hey, at 98. Totally compass menti. Totally there, sprightly, <laughs> wonderful. It's it's just, you know, meeting a person like that and watching her, you know, walk around on her walker, can't walk on her own anymore. She was abused as a young girl, discouraged, told she'd amount to nothing. And she was the first woman president of a bank in Houston, one a full life, and yet here she was at 98, still going strong, still writing books, still accomplishing, way past her retirement, she retired at 65, amazing, eh, and then, you know, it, it, puts, it puts life into perspective, and here you are, a young man of 53, <laughs> or 63, or 73, you realize that even if you were 73 you'd be a young man compared to this lady of 98 years old still writing books still going out there giving lectures and encouraging people she'd look down at a 75 year old from her 98 years old and she'd, hey, you're just a young man your life is just beginning <laughs> amazing eh very encouraging another way my friends to look at the winter blues is this we say to ourselves I realize I'm being asked to grow in new ways. See, so maybe we should look at it that way. We might consider that winter is a time for someone else to shine and be successful, while we take a back seat. Yeah, don't be greedy. 
You don't need all the glory all the time. You see, that's another kind of addiction. That's another kind of drug. Another kind of narcotic. Take a back seat during the winter of your nature. <laughs> Let someone else shine. <laughs> your spring is coming again. Your summer is coming again. Your fall is coming again. Your autumn. You will, you will shine again. See? So let, let, let someone else be successful. Let someone else take the applause. We, we, we would say, well, I wish all who are in the spring and summer and fall of their lives the joy of their success, knowing that I too will enter the spring of success again. Yes, of course you will. Unless you give up. Of course you will. But in the meantime, say to yourself, well, I can rest now. I can renew. I can reap spiritual rewards. Maybe I'll use the winter time of my soul, of my nature, to look into the spirit of things, to ask, well, why am I here? Where did I come from? Where am I going? Who am I? Very interesting and very important questions. You know, in this day and age where uh, we're all dumbed out, numbed out by television, by politics, by economics, by worries, by fears, by food, by sex, by narcotics. It is alarming how many people are taking narcotics and thinking it's okay. It is alarming how many people are smoking hashish and marijuana and tacha and sniffing cocaine and think, well, I can stop any time. It's not harming me. My friend, you're so wrong. You're so wrong. You are so wrong. Of course it is harming you. Even, ma even, even dacha and hashish and marijuana, people are under the wrong impression that it's okay to do those narcotics, that they are mild, that they don't have lasting effects. My friend, they have horrend. My friends, they have horrendous lasting effects on your lungs, on your emotions, on your being. They have horrendous physical, emotional, and psychological effects. The very fact that you are doing them means you are declaring you are not enough alone. And of course, just as deadly, just as destructive is alcohol and cigarette smoking. Just as destructive. Just as destructive. Make no mistake, my friends. Just because 99 other million people are doing it, so to speak, doesn't mean it's right that you should do it as well. Doesn't mean that. Not at all. So we're like a spent flower in winter, my friends. Tired and needing rest and recovery. See, not from the outer world necessarily, but from our inner selves. And remember, I'm talking about the natures the, the seasons of our nature here and not the outside seasons, okay? Because you could be out of sync. would be nice if you were in sync and with a lot of um, dedication and commitment. You can get to the point where your inner natures are in sync with the outer. I mean, your inner seasons are in sync with the outer seasons. But most, m m most of us, we're not in sync. So, yeah, we, in, in the winter of our natures, we feel tired, we feel we need rest, we need recovery. Instead, though, many of us enter the winter, our winter natures, desperate to hold on to the energy of the fall or autumn, which slips through our fingers no matter how tightly we clench our fists ain't gonna happen ain't gonna happen let go my friends let go in its due season for you spring will come to you again winter is a time for the god force a time of spiritual renewal if you want to put it that way emotional renewal whatever you believe in 
creative intelligence, etc., your higher self, your authentic self. It doesn't mean that we have to lose everything. No, 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 no. Or even that we have to lose anything. No, that's not where I'm coming from. Don't misunderstand me, my friends. What falls away in the winter of our inner natures are the outworn trappings with which we identify ourselves, is what I'm saying. Whether we're stressed beyond reason or deeply unhappy doesn't seem to matter. Doesn't seem to matter. We persist in staying where we think the power or the money or the prestige lives. We persist in staying there even though we may be suffocating. Winter has the effect of releasing us from those burdens and bringing perspective. Our winter nature. We continue to want the things that are identified with outward signs of success, the status, the career, the happy relationship, the appearance, the clever wit, the brilliant physical prowess, the great health, etc. My friends, I so enjoyed. I was at home affairs this morning picking up an ID book, attempting to pick up an ID book correction for my young daughter. <laughs> Eight months now and counting, we're still waiting. And uh, this uh, man next to me said, me, Well, this is, you know. All complaining about waiting so long, says to me, well, at least we won the rugby. I said, what rugby? <laughs> I was so thrilled, my friends, not to know that we were even playing rugby last night. Who cares? Not me, let me tell you. That is, to me, sports has gone way out of whack in society. We've idolized it and put it up on a pedestal as if it is the all-important thing. But it's just another narcotic, it's just another drug of choice. See, it's out of whack, it's out of perspective, sports in the world. Why should I care who played when, what? Why? What does it matter to me? What does it matter to the people who are starving in the world, who are dying, who are being shot to death, who are having their limbs blown away? What does it matter to the senior citizens among us who eke out a sub-sub existence on pensions that they can't even pay their rent with, never mind buy food and clothing? What does that matter? That's just a lie. That's an obscene lie, an illusion, an obscene illusion. I was so thrilled not to know that they were even playing rugby last night. Yes. <laughs> Sorry for those sports fans out there. Bless you. But it's just the way I feel about it. I just feel it's a, it's a distraction that's out of proportion to the things that really matter in life. You know. And have you ever tried to get an autograph for one of these gods or goddesses of sport? Oh, good luck to you. They really despise us. We're in the way. Although I pretend otherwise. Anyway, venting there, forgive me. So, in the winter of our time, and I know the ladies will all be saying, yes, tell them. <laughs> Men spend way too much time <laughs> being preoccupied with sport <laughs> and neglecting their, uh, the, the things that count far more than sport. Hey, there's a place in sport. I, I I enjoy playing a game of squash, racquetball, etc. I enjoy swimming in a pool that has no chlorine. Yeah, I, I, I enjoy playing the odd soccer, etc. Soccer game, whatever. Socially. But I mean, to go to those fanatic proportions. My word. I think not. There are things to me that matter more. But hey, if that matters to you, bless you. No problemo. Good for you. So once uh, relieved of what is burdensome, burdensome in the in the in our winter seasons, we climb quickly back into the fray again until winter once more shows us what really matters now. 
as we grow spiritually, our winters deal more with the interior of our lives, you see. We are prodded again to give up the fears, the anger, the desires, the inordinate desires and jealousies that have grown up along with material success. At first we lose what we think we want. Then we lose what we are ready to give up. I like to think of my winter time as a ship coming in to dry dock to get rid of the barnacles so that I can be ready again, nice and shiny, renewed, rested, did some meditation, some contemplation for the spring, for the summer, for the next seasons. All right, my friends, believe it or not, we are halfway. I'm going to give uh, my number in a minute. I do uh, consult as a natural medicine consultant. Those of you who want to um, see me, I'll give my number in a minute. We are halfway. Uh, here on 1422 medium wave of the new panhellenic voice with our program uh, the inner voice stay with us this is dr gabriel Edis then uh, i'll give my number again at the end but uh, my number is 076-189-6690 i repeat 076-189-6690 stay with us Θα πάμε τώρα φίλοι και φίλε στο συνηθισμένο μας διαφημιστικό διάλειμμα και θα είμαστε και πάλι μαζί σε λίγα λεπτά. Θα σας δώσω τώρα το τηλέφωνο μου για όποιον θέλει να επικοινωνήσει μαζί μου για διάφορες θεραπείες με natural medicine και θα ξαναδώσω το νούμερό μου στο τέλος της εκπομπής. Λοιπόν, μείνετε μαζί μας εδώ στα 1422 μεσαία κύματα τη νέα πανελλήνιας φωνή με το πρόγραμμά μα Εσωτερική Φωνή. Ο Dr. Παναγιώτης Γαβριλίδης μαζί σας μέχρι τις μία ώρα. Το νούμερό μου λοιπόν είναι 076-189-6690. Επαναλαμβάνω, λίγο πιο σιγανά. 076-189-6690. Μείνετε μαζί μας. You are tuned to 1422 Medium Wave. This is the new Panhellenic Voice. I'm Dr. Gabrielidis. With our program, The Inner Voice, welcome to the second half. Um, we'll be going till one o'clock. And uh, I am um, talking today about the seasons of our nature. Uh, that just as uh, nature doesn't stay forever in a single season, neither do we. Uh, just the, as there are four seasons in nature, our inner natures also experience different seasons. Uh, spring, a season of new beginnings, summer. Uh, reaping, um, no, growing, our, putting out the effort, growing our uh, fruits of our new beginnings, and in autumn harvesting, and then um, in winter. That's what I'm focusing on, what happens in winter. All right. Um, illness is a winter opportunity. Mental and physical illnesses are experiences of the winter of our inner natures. We can't run away from them. So we have no choice but to stay and learn. It's one thing you can't run away from, illness, isn't it? People talk about the gift of an illness. The gift is that we've been given an opportunity to heal a dysfunctional behavior or a useless emotional pattern. The gift, the pain is not the gift. The inconvenience is not the gift. No. <laughs> The gift is the opportunity to heal either a dysfunctional behavior or a useless emotional pattern. We are offered an opportunity to move to an advanced level of awareness, releasing unwanted patterns of anger, resentment, envy, jealousy, regret, judgment, loss, etc., etc., etc. Sometimes we are able to release the patterns and the illness Uh, instead of our lives. In the broadest view of life, healing isn't just about changing the body, my friends. It's about adjusting our perception and about learning to love. Not in a mushy way, please. I'm talking about true love, mature love. Can't heal without love. True love practical love, authentic love, not mushy sentimentality, please. That's just another illusion. 
<laughs> Healing happens when we believe in the power of love that is in us. Yes, the power of real love, not the mushiness. Don't ever forget that, my dear friends. You can't heal when you are in hate mode. I hate her. I hate him. You'll never heal when you're in that mode. When you have no love in your being. In fact, you can do nothing without the power of true love. Marriages and partnerships also move through the cycle of spring and summer and fall and winter. And you see you see there's great there's a great peace and a great blessing in understanding that. that oh why don't I always feel the same about her? Oh must be something wrong with her. <laughs> Or well, maybe with me. <laughs> maybe I'm changed. Maybe I don't like her anymore. No, 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 no. No. It's just a change of season. Stay with her. The spring will come again. And you'll say, Wow, am I glad I did not leave her in the winter. <laughs> you see? A lot of us tend to get divorced in the winter of our inner lives. And we tend to come together in the spring. Did you know that? And the summer or the fall. In long-standing relationships, uh, winter holds the potential for one of two things. Rediscovery, recommit recommitment, or goodbye, I'm bailing out. <laughs> Don't bail out. The wonderful man or woman you first met is still there in most cases. I, there are always exceptions. I know that, my friends. But in most cases, that sweet little dear thing you fell in love with, that strong, sensitive man, that strong man, whatever you saw in him when you first did, he or she is still there. Stay, stay, stay. You know? We enter and leave winter with different minds and hearts. We may come into winter determined to leave a relationship, but emerge knowing we'll stay. See, yeah, that, that's what you want, you see. The grass is not greener on the other side of the hill. No. Just as winter snows moisten the earth so that spring flowers can grow, the tears of winter will awaken a new and glorious spring for our hearts. They will, if you don't give up. You just hang in there. All of our successes in the world and our progress on a spiritual path comes from learning to maximize the insights we receive from our authentic selves during the winter of our lives. See, it's easy to sail through life in summer and the fall when we're working hard and we're feeling strong and we're feeling good and people are taking notice of what we're doing and applauding us. Anybody can do that. You know, Shakespeare knew about this when he wrote about the winter of our discontent. In the winter, though, you see, in the winter it's difficult. It's different. You see, if we sense that a divine guiding hand is with us at all times and that we never walk alone, and that's so easy to forget, we will find a way to look past our old emotional blocks, even though they come from real problems that we've actually experienced. We'll learn that our lives aren't made up of what we know through our intellect, but of the love and compassion that we experience in our beings, in our hearts. You already are authentic, my friends. The challenge is to feel and to know that you are. That is the challenge. To find the spiritual directions we are seeking, the ways to love and have love returned, is not always easy. We all know that. It requires us to visit our inner voice to show us how to live without an agenda. Oh, and that's so difficult. 
It is so easy to live with an agenda. We do it unconsciously, subconsciously. <laughs> Run around with an agenda. And God help anybody who gets in the path of that agenda. Terrible. At first we're frightened and disbelieving. We think it's impossible for us to love without a deal that binds us at the level of our weaknesses rather than our strengths. But the voice of the sacred doesn't dangle relationships in front of us, whispering, if we just do or become something, then, you know, if he or she just does what I want them to do. <laughs> Instead, this inner voice tells us we're more than enough. We are all divine children of God. We are. We're the same. We're all equal. We can, of course, have relationships that are nourishing and fulfilling as soon as we learn to be ourselves without apology. And there is a big key. Learning to be ourselves without apology. Unless, of course, you're too obnoxious. Then maybe you need to mellow down a bit, please. <laughs> I know, been there, done that. This voice speaks with the assurances we need. This is the voice of our authentic selves with a capital S. The self with a capital S, the authentic self, the noble self, not the one that's afraid and needy and that's a little child. By comparison and for clarification, the voice of our personalities is the one that until now we've always believed. This very familiar voice separates us from others by telling us that we're not enough, we must do better, try harder, etc. This is the voice that is relentless in pushing us to secure the material needs of our lives, even at the risk of our health and sanity. So many people neglect their health. We push and struggle for our rightful sh share, and we're convinced that our responsibilities are limited to our little corner of the world and our individual families. This is the voice of our small selves, with a small s, our personalities, in other words, our personas, our masks. The way we find the one true and essential voice inside us is different for every one of us, by the way, and is not limited to one such experience. Once one makes contact with the authentic self, then the experiences continue throughout our lives. Uh, like you, uh, I've had many, many amazing such experiences. But I also have them regularly by doing my morning routine, which is to read a few pages from an inspiring book. So I don't have to be climbing a mountain or being in some wilderness to discover it necessarily. It can just be every day while I'm reading my an inspiring book in the morning. I often find surprising insights while meandering alone along the quiet pages of someone else's thoughts on paper. For example, I may be working on trying to love and care for myself, not out of fear or resentment of others, but out of compassion and acceptance for myself because I know that if I cannot extend this courtesy to myself, how will I extend it to my fellow human beings? won't be able to. Often I struggle to find the inner voice of my authentic self, especially in the winters of my life. Boy, like everybody, like you, I struggle. I reflect on a statement that I'm reading. Uh, the piece may suggest that I should try to understand my true nature, my authentic self, in much the same way I think about my children my home, my work, my friends, and my physical body. When I think, this is my body, I am to consider who it is that is announcing it possesses a body. It isn't my body itself, but something in me that guides and directs my body. It's not my mind, because that too is a part of my physical composition. Then it would be my spirit, my authentic self, wouldn't it? And our spirit is none other than the oneness, 
that we're all a part of. Okay, so I realize that the path to greater understanding and love and compassion is to find the I am that creates life rather than the I of my physical body and mind. I am to look for the part of me that is the originator of the ideas, the genuine creator within. My inner voice is the place where the oneness abides. This voice is our authentic self, and our compassionate healer is another aspect of this voice. Wow, look at the time. I'm never going to get through this today. I wanted next to go into how we grow more authentic. Yeah. Yeah, my friends, I will, I will, this is really worth continuing next time. Um, so I'm going to do that. Go into how we grow more authentic next time and, and, and finish this uh, interesting research that I prepared for you on the um, seasons of our nature. So, um, let's end it off here then. Um, till uh, next time we've come um, uh, to the end of the road for today my friends time wise so tune in again let me invite you to tune in again next Monday at uh, high noon at 12 right here on 1422 medium wave of the new Panhellenic voice um, till then just remember just, just think about this between now and next week about and, and notice what Na what season are you in now your nature okay we're all approaching summer I'm not talking about that that's just an analogy and start noticing the seasons of your nature and don't be alarmed when you go from high energy to low energy and in between realize that that's how we are okay and we'll conclude this topic next week all right um, I am gonna give my number in a minute those want those of you who want to have pen and paper I do consult um, as a natural medicine practitioner, those of you who do wish to consult me, my telephone number is 076-189-6690. I repeat, 076-189-6690. CDs of this program and past programs are available from me. Contact me if you're interested. Also, if you have a group that you'd like me to give a talk to, I'll be happy to do that, and I do those for free. Just let me know. Uh, till next time, my friends, this is Dr. Gabriel Iris. Take care, keep smiling, uh, have a good week, and remember my program on health uh, tomorrow evening between 7 to 8 p.m. right here on 1422 Medium Wave of the new Panhellenic Voice. Um, I'll, I'll be discussing uh, aging, why we age, why we get chronically sick tomorrow, and what we can uh, do about it before we get there. Uh, because prevention is definitely better than the cure when it comes to aging. All right, my friends. See you uh, all tomorrow evening and uh, next week. Lipon, kiris ki kiri, fili ki filis, fasame, sotelus ti sekrombismas ke yasimera, thayme ke pali mazisas ti nepomeni daftera, potis dodeka to misimeri, mehri tis mia yora to poivma, edos ta deka testreko si dio mesea kimata tis neas panelimias fonis, Osia posas telte me simbolefite ya diaphoras terapies me natural medicine. Borita na pikinista mazimus o telefono mi then epta exi ena ochto enea exi exi enea mi then epanalam vano mi then epta exi ena ochto enea exi exi enea mi then. Episis boronasas promis thefso CDs of tuto programatos ke olon ton proigomenon programaton mu. Όπως επίσης δίνω διαλέξεις στην Αγγλική, εάν έχετε ένα γκρουπ που ενδιαφέρεται για μια τέτοια διάλεξη, μη διστάστε να επικοινωνήσετε μαζί μου, οι διαλέξεις μου είναι εντελώς δωρεάν. Αυτά λοιπόν αγαπητοί μου φίλοι και φίλες, από μένα τον δόκτωρα Παναγιώτη Γαβριλίδη, καλή σας απόγευμα, καλή σας μέρα και καλή σας εβδομάδα και μην ξεχάσετε να με ακούσετε αύριο βράδυ από τις 7 μέχρι τις 8 εδώ στην νέα Πανελλήνια Φωνή.